Hi, it's Philo. Today we're setting up November in my bullet journal with a very cozy theme. And for this, I used this Cats and Books washi tape from the washi tape shop. I love this style, it's like watercolor paintings of bookshops, old books and papers, cute cats playing or napping, and vintage furniture and even stationery. And the loop is very long, you have a heap of variety and different sizes to combine and fit everywhere, so that's great for a bullet journal theme. And they sent me the washi tape one, but now all their designs are pre-cut. Even when you choose the PET clear tape version, the stickers are already pre-cut. As always, I leave links to all my supplies down in the description, along with my discount codes. And when I saw this beautiful cat, I thought, hmm, what a distinguished gentleman. Look at the way he's sitting, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a portrait of an ancestor hanging on the wall over a fireplace and stuff. So I immediately saw my theme. First, I put the cat right in the center, very dignified in his old age. <laughs> he's sitting on a pile of books and luggage. I added a candle for the light and suspense books, a cat, and a candle, what could go wrong? And then it needs a frame to showcase this invaluable family portrait. Of course, it's been immortalized with its favorite ball of yarn. And I had this clear tape with brown lace, some would say very mindful, very demure, I would never. It's also from the washi tape shop, by the way. And I cut it a bit randomly, because I will put stickers on top anyway. I can't paste the frame yet because I have to start with the background, with old papers, a coffee cup, and we even have a banner with the title of our theme. And now I can finally paste the paper frame on top and look at that. I kind of wonder what this great grand cat is admired and remembered for. <laughs> if you have any guess, you're welcome to share it in the comments. But anyway, we need a bit of context around with furniture, a lamp, and of course, a great grand kitten to admire his forefather and also maybe scratch his clothes on the frame because cats. For the title, I had the perfect stencil and you probably recognize it from my reading journal videos because I use it a lot lately, but I don't think I had ever used it in my bullet journal. It's a nice bold serif font, but a tiny bit fancy with the long tail at the end of the R. So then I filled the letters with only a few lines for a more organic look. Chuk chuk chuk. If you know, you know. <laughs> and I add a grey drop shadow on the right of each letter so they stand out. I let you guess what happens with cats and coffee cups, so there has to be a coffee stain somewhere, right? So for this splash of chaos, I'm using the stencil from the junk journal set from Notebook Therapy. At the top of the page, I add a wide white washi tape with handwriting. This way it frames the page without stealing the show. And I rip it around the middle and paste it at the bottom of the spread. On top, I add this beautiful lantern to shine more light on the painting and just a last washi tape to balance out the browns and I'm very happy with this cover. I think it's busy and cozy and I think we may be in the presence of another hullabaloo of a theme and I'm so here for it. On to the monthly spread. And I'm starting with the main calendar for the month. I'm drawing a frame around the whole calendar and it's very simple wavy lines meeting at the center of each side. I'm freehanding all the lines here and using broken lines for a dainty look. I leave the dimensions on the screen and I don't draw vertical lines so that I can write any event on successive days. 
Below, as usual, I'll have my social trackers for the month. And for the headers, I'm using the stencil again, lowercase for the days and uppercase for the title. Here it's in November when we can see the leaves changing colors and it's a pretty eventful month for me with a bunch of birthdays and organizing Christmas holidays so I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm writing the title just like I did on the cover, but since it's from a bit closer, you can see I colored it with lines so that it's not too dark, there's not too much contrast, and I think it matches more the watercolor effect on the stickers. I'm highlighting the weeks in the calendar using colors that also remind the ones we see on the stickers. So it's brown, beige and a dark green, a pretty neutral color palette and a lighter beige for the frame. These are Tombow Dual Brush Pens and I'll also leave the numbers of the colors in the description. On the right, I'm highlighting a few lines for the books I read, which are usually between three and four or five. And I'm starting this time with the white handwritten washi tape as the background for my collage. Again, ripping it in half to use the other half at the bottom. This time I chose an old bookstore as the main decorating piece for this spread, but I'm also adding smaller stickers all around. I want to use different stickers from the loop, but making sure I have the main elements of this theme on each spread. So we have lanterns, books and of course cats. I keep a section for my main priorities for the month and I thought this magnifying glass was more explicit to save myself writing another header, which turned out to be a good move because I started stamping the title books for the book section, but I think it's better not to use too many different fonts, so then I opted just to write everything else by hand. But back to the sticker tape, if you want to get yourself sticker tapes and you have a doubt as to whether you should choose the washi tape or the clear tape version, know that the background of the washi tape is very slightly white. You can't see it on white paper, but you can see the borders when you collage. And on the other hand, clear stickers are easier to layer and collage, but it's a bit shiny on a certain angle. So I personally don't have a preference, but if you use colored paper in your background, then I recommend the PET design. To finish up this spread, I remember to add a coffee stain for a touch of chaos and sparkles and shimmers for a touch of magic. Next are the trackers, and I'll have my habit trackers on the left page, so I'm starting with the header. I'm writing habit with the stencil, as before, but since it was slightly off-centered, I decided to write trackers in calligraphy, right below, but slightly off-centered in the other direction to compensate. So it's improvisation, but I really like that combination of fonts, I think it looks very elegant. Below, I outline four mini calendars for my habits and I also leave the measurements for you on the screen. And this month, I decided to bring my work hour tracker on this page because I changed my weeklies. You'll see what I mean in a minute. 
So my work tracker is very customized. You probably won't use the same, but you could do another habit tracker instead if you want. And I'm tracing all the inside grids with broken lines so it doesn't look too harsh, but I don't write the dates. The shapes of the calendars are enough to figure out the days anyway. To fill them in, I think I'll put a dot on the days I did said habit. And the calendars were getting a bit lost on the page, so I'm bringing them out with a drop shadow. I'll decorate the whole spread together, but for now off we are with the meal planner on the right page. And for the sake of cohesiveness, I'm using the stencil to letter meal slightly to the left, and I'm writing planner in calligraphy right below, slightly to the right, as if I had meant it all along, you know? <laughs> The meal planner itself is very simple. It's my now usual table with a column for each week and a line for each day. I don't know why I see it better with this vertical setup, but it works. Here you have the measurements for a four weeks or a five weeks month. And I keep on doing full weeks because it's easier to meal plan since I try to limit my grocery shopping to once a week. Next, we need a touch of color to remind the color palette for the whole theme. So I highlight the headers in green and beige and I write the titles by hand. This month, I'll keep track of my workout, posting on Instagram and YouTube, reading and my work hours. On the meal planner, I forgot to leave a line above the table. So I'm using the first line on Mondays to write the dates. So don't forget this line. And since we're doing full weeks here, we're starting November 4th and ending December 1st. And now it's time for the fun part, decorating the spread with all the cute stickers. And my favorite is this big stack of old books. Of course, we'll need more cats. And here you can see I was figuring out where I wanted everything. I'm playing with all the stickers, but keep in mind that those videos are speeded up and edited. Sometimes I move the stickers around several times before I'm happy with the result. Things where I draw are more straightforward to edit because I sketch them beforehand, but themes where I collage like this one, I only have a sketch for the layout, but I don't know what stickers I'll put where before filming. So there's quite a bit of footage you don't see of me basically trying and figuring things out as I go, but we don't need to see that. And I don't know if you noticed, but this very suspicious cat is clearly planning something with those books. I think it's purposefully miscalculating its jump over the tea and the candle, and maybe it's already left tracks behind it from its last encounter with the coffee cup. And now with the weekly. I'm starting with the white washi tape to see what space I have left for everything. Over the last few months, I did a lot of touch doors, but this month I really wanted to try different layouts again and enjoy the space. So we're back to full spreads weeklies. So for this first one, I'm going with vertical daily boxes. And again, I leave you the dimensions here. It leaves plenty of space to decorate on the top left and the bottom right of the page. And I'm only doing six boxes for symmetry. The last one will have to fit Saturday and Sunday. But let's not forget Sunday. What would I do without Sundays? Yes, thank you. Thank you. 
I'm adding drop shadows to bring out the dailies, make them pop up against the white page and writing the days by hand. Then I saw that there were five different bookshop stickers on this tape, so I thought I would do a nice kind of street with only bookshops. Well, you know me. Ideally, I would put a bakery between two shops, right? But they didn't know that when they designed the tape. So, <laughs> anyway, how would your ideal street be? Like, what shops would you have? I thought I would write the title of the week as if it's the address above one of the shops and then I'll just have to add more stickers with books and cats to bring it all together. Alright, here is the final flip through of this November cozy bullet journal setup with cats, books and bookshops. Thank you all for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this theme and the background stories of our mischievous little characters. Check out the links to my supplies along with my discount codes down in the description. And if you'd like to see other November plan with me videos, you'll also find them below. I especially recommend you watch November 2022, which was a mix of washi tape and easy doodles. If you made it till the end, leave me this emoji and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll post a short for each new week, so make sure to activate the bell. I wish you a very happy November and I'll see you soon in the next one. And until then, enjoy planning!